you are now tuned in to The Money Zone with your host, Falasha Day, the accountant for entrepreneurs. The time is now, your future waits, your money matters, make no mistake, it's not too late to dominate, so don't delay, get your money straight. The money, money, the money zone, together we'll achieve your goals, we're building wealth, you're not alone, so don't delay, get your money straight. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm your girl, Falasha Day, the accountability accountant, guys. I am like so excited to be with you all today on this amazing Tuesday. Once again, if you if we are live and healthy, look, we have to chop that up as um, blessings nowadays. So guys, look, COVID-19, SBA loans, businesses struggling, it is so much to talk about. So guys, on today's segment of The Money Zone, we are talking about iconic small businesses are struggling across the states, okay? Iconic small businesses are struggling across the states. A state. So if you guys are watching us on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Rip Radio, please share the video up with one of your friends, followers, or anyone that you know of that owns a business, okay? So look, we're going to take a quick break, and then we will be right back.
Hey guys. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, I'm your girl Falasha Day, the accountability accountant, guys. I help entrepreneurs and individuals um, live both their business dreams, guys, by giving them the numbers that they need, the accountability, and coaching them to the ultimate greatness that you guys are. Okay, look, iconic businesses are struggling across America today. And so we all know exactly what's happening. So let me just do a brief little recap all the way back. So, you know, we're all going through this COVID-19 pandemic. And if your business is uh, non-essential, then most states have closed you down. So non-essential businesses were considered to be uh, bars and lounges, uh, restaurants, um, various different um, industries, okay? So I'm about to, where is it? Where is my, okay, well, I'm missing. Okay, here we go. So the non-essential businesses um, in my state, in Maryland in particular, are not able to operate their businesses. So if you are a um, non-essential business, if you were to perform services, then you can be fined or even jailed. And each state have their own different requirements pertaining to um, the legalities behind it. But according to, as you guys can see, did I pick the wrong screen? Okay, let me make sure I have the right screen. Nope, wrong screen. Not doing good today. Hold on. Okay, there we go. All right. So as you guys can see on my screen, these are the mandatory closures in the state of Maryland. And most states actually resemble um, the same situation. So shopping malls are closed entertainment venues are closed, bars and restaurants are closed, but restaurants can still offer takeout, um, delivery and drive through options, okay? Cinemons, theaters, fitness centers, spas, beauty salons, beauty supplies, oh, Maryland courts, government buildings, um, any type of gatherings that exceed 10 people are um, restricted. So that means anyone hosting conferences for a living, anyone that's a speaker for a living um, have been impacted. Um, landlords can no longer evict anyone right now due to enduring the pandemic. So if you don't pay your rent right now, you're in like Flint um, because your landlord is unable to um, evict you or even start the process. Also, our utility companies are disallowed um, to discontinue um, any of our utility services. OK, so if you are not a essential business, OK, if you're not an essential business, you're more than likely closed. And what we're finding is the small businesses are starting. Um, the small businesses are starting to definitely guess what? Show the negative impact of this particular situation, this pandemic, this rare occurrence um, from happening, okay? So I'm about to share my screen from News 40 and they're talking about an iconic business, um, Irondale Cafe. They are struggling right now uh, with their funding. And so here's a quick little video. Oh no, loading the ad, y'all. Okay, so while we're waiting, um, okay, here we go. At the iconic Irondale Cafe. Sales dropped about 80% since the COVID-19 crisis. The restaurant switched to online ordering and curbside pickup to make a buck. 
customers picked up lunch wearing masks. Eat some food and support the local business. Half the restaurant staff is unemployed. The owner is still waiting on approval for a federal paycheck protection program loan. We're just devastated. We're definitely struggling. It's been, you know, this last month it has just been unprecedented for us. Alabama Appliance opened the showroom a year ago. They also run an established online appliance business. Sales dropped, but 11 employees are still on the job thanks to their online business and a PPP loan. Very helpful for us as a business, very helpful for our employees. And that also, um, you know, give us hope uh, that when things go back, our transition would be able to go back to normal as, you know, quickly. Irondale City government began the COVID-19 crisis with a $2 million surplus the mayor expects to finish the fiscal year in the black. We just try to be good stewards and good good managers of, of the residents' money. It's survival of the fittest. In Irondale, Brian Pia, ABC 3340 News. Okay, guys. So that is just one iconic business. Um, but they're going across the states. But you, let's really be honest. When it comes down to money, no one wants to be extremely honest about any financial hardship or any type of delinquency, um, any late payments, anything. So, like, you know how, like, I boldly told you guys as I was building my business, as I was building my business, I almost lost my home, almost lost my car. People are not as boisterous and open about um, their misfalls, okay? So right now, many businesses are not saying they're struggling, but if you take the other iconic business that I'm going to talk about today and Irondale, and you put them across the board and compare them, they're the typical, they're the typical small, iconic, small business. They're the typical iconic small business in the respects, I think I am freezing. Okay, they're the typical small business in the respects of notoriety in the community. What is happening? Look, guys, so welcome back. Look, last week when we started to dig deep, guys, I don't know what's happening, but it seems like my feed is starting to get a little interrupted now. I must be giving up too much juice or being too analytical here. However, when you compare an Irondale Cafe uh, across the board with the other company that we're going to talk about on today's show as well, they are the typical iconic small businesses that is destined to survive. They are destined to pass down generational wealth. They are destined to leave a legacy. And the other company that is having financial strife and issues right now 
is our fellow DMV based business. Let me see if I can show it up. Oh no, this is not even the one that I, the article that I even wanted. Let me go to my other article. The other company, um, the iconic company is Ben's Chili Bowl. Ben's Chili Bowl did an article with the Federalist, and I'm about to share that article now. And they were same situation, just like Irondale. They're waiting and waiting and waiting for their PPP funding, okay? So they can now pay their staff, okay? So the owners, Ali, um, basically said that they had to close down every location besides their main street, their U Street, their main location on U Street. I don't know what this is on my screen, y'all, and it's not letting me move. Look. Oh my goodness, I'm just going through it today. Look, technical difficulties, y'all. I can't even show y'all the articles or anything. Who is this? Who is this person? And where did this article come from, y'all? What, what didn't happen? So look, let me stop sharing and go back and just, it is what it is, y'all. I, I may not be able to show y'all some articles because everybody wants to get a lot of ad money and you barely can even uh, view the articles now without the many excessive um, ads that's there. Okay, so it's back up. So the Ben Chili Bowl, they did a um, interview with the Federalist um, magazine with newspaper and they were basically saying that they're waiting for their PPP funding to come around. Okay, so they're waiting for the funding. However, where they said that they are facing an economic curl. It said Ben's Chili Bowl, a fast food diner located in the heart of Washington, D.C., was one of a few businesses left standing when riots erupted after Martin Luther King Jr. was murdered. The U Street location is home to an iconic mural painted on its building and is filled with autograph pictures of politicians and celebrities who frank with the restaurant. Regardless of its cultural and social significance, Ben's Chili Bowl is not immune to the economic pressure of COVID-19. In fact, the family owners told the Federalists, the restaurant is devastated. We were booming and doing great before the whole COVID-19 thing. And then when COVID-19 hit us, it devastated us tremendously. And we ended up dropping sales over 80%. Is there not a consistency? The company uh, over there in Irondale Cafe said their sales dropped in the upwards of 80%. Ben's Chili Bowl is saying the same thing. And almost every non-essential business across the board, across the country, is now suffering with 80% losses in revenue. How will any business survive if the iconic businesses are having a tough time to survive? So Ben's, he so, so Ali said, um, Ben's Chili Bowl is awaiting a loan from the Small Business Association Pay Paycheck Protection Program in which Congress authorized the 349, y'all know that, right? They said, unfortunately, the businesses was unable to apply for a PPP loan before the portal for the first wave of applications closed, just like millions and millions and millions of small businesses, the majority, right? So when applications open up on, 20, on Monday, Right. Yesterday, they were like, OK, OK, we in. Right. But that does not guarantee you will get funding. They also said our bank assured us that they would have everything ready to go. And it was just a matter of pushing a button to submit. And that as soon as the portal was open, it will be done. Our PPP loan will be done now. Ali said we're optimistic. So they are optimistic about getting funding. But the average small business owner isn't optimistic 
about getting funding. A lot of small businesses that I've talked to, especially my online entrepreneurs, you guys are immune. You're like, okay, you know what? I, I'm i not really that impacted about things. My clients are still bringing in money. I'm okay. I, that's what I'm finding. Also, because so many brick and mortars feel as though they don't have a fair chance of even getting approved uh, for the loan, then guess what? They are not even trying, okay? And so it's really chaotic. Honestly, over the weekend, especially Monday, yesterday, it was kind of crazy in our office here because we were submitting tax returns, doing PPP applications. The children was over here running crazy and it was just so much to really handle. But what I'm finding is that a lot of small businesses are just closing their doors. So if you were to just take a drive, go and look at your neighbor and businesses. Some of them already have signs closed for good. Some of them have signs that says closed temporarily. My question to you guys before we go on break, are you prepared to prevent your business from closing permanently? And are we prepared to assist our community and to assist our businesses in not failing? So guys, I'm going to take a quick little break and then I'm going to come back and we're going to finish up this conversation. All right. I'll be back.
Okay, guys. So, look, we freezing, and I don't even know. Look, just bear with us until we get back in the studio. But I think they are really coming into my feed because Trump, the owner of radio, he said he can – I'm still live. Like, it's just I'm frozen. I can't say anything, just like CNN. So, guys, look, right before the break, we were going right into um, 80% sales drop. For these iconic businesses, we also talked about um, the non-essential businesses versus essential businesses. Okay, but then let's connect the dots now. Things are just not making sense. Okay, so let's let's take a back trip. Let's take a step back. So, March 2017, President Trump signed into the Cures Act, and a lot of times, not to insult. Our, uh, um, our electoral, our politicians and our president, not to kind of throw big shade at them, but I don't know where they're coming up with the numbers. Okay, so for this PPP program to work for the average small business owner, you have to retain the same amount of employees or the same amount of pay. So let's say for example, prior to COVID, um, you had 10 staff and your payroll was a hundred thousand dollars. That means right now, while you're waiting to get approved for your PPP loan, right? You won't be able to let anybody go. So you have to keep on the hundred thousand in payroll to 10 employees. Once you get approved, you still have to maintain those 10 employees at that same hundred thousand dollar um, wage amount. But my concern is you're not making the same amount of money. You're making 80% less. So how are we expecting our small businesses to retain their employees, to continue to keep paying their bills and trying to stay afloat with 80% less revenue with the same amount of staff? The numbers just does it make sense? And this is why so many of our businesses are going to actually fail. And it's going to be actually governmental imposed failure. Okay. So that means the government imposed this failure on the small businesses. Why should they be required to retain the same amount of employees? Why? Why should that even be a requirement? Shouldn't it be a requirement to maintain the business so you can go back in four months and eventually hire somebody isn't shouldn't the main goal be to sustain the business why are we concerned about retaining the employees on payroll and it clicked on me remember our conversation two to three weeks ago guys when i told you that they do not want the unemployment rate to rise and as you know, we're at 24, 24 million Americans have already applied for unemployment. If the amount of unemployment claims continue to rise, it will constitute a recession. So they're trying to prevent a recession from happening, but not understanding that they have to maintain the small businesses. There's no employees if there's no a business. If the business cannot sustain, if the business cannot increase revenue and pivot their business, how are they going to pay the same 10 people and they're only serving five clients a month? It doesn't add up. So I'm about to share my screen really quick, guys, so you can all see the, the, the shadiness that is happening right now. So I know you guys heard that Ruth Chris ended up getting a lot of money. I, I know that you guys heard of so many different companies. I ended up giving you guys a full list on the radio show last week of all of the Fortune 5,000, I said Fortune 5,000, Fortune 1,000, Fortune 500 companies were able to receive millions of dollars funding, right? But that was what was publicized. A lot of these businesses like Nathan's, nobody didn't know. 
The only reason why people were able to find out was because they put in their financial statements that they received um, some funding. So it says, yet another national restaurant chain received money from the government's $350 billion program intended to help the small businesses hardest hit by the coronavirus. First things first, I don't blame the actual companies. And I'm going to tell you why. Because if you guys remember when I first talked about the loan programs, I mentioned to you guys, they didn't specify the requirements. Remember, I told you there was supposed to be certain specificities included, such as credit rating, the amount of years in business, the if the business should be uh, profitable, how what is the minimum amount of employees. There were no major stipulations or specifications regarding these loans. The only thing that was, was saying, the only uh, guideline was if your business have over 500 employees, they have to get special approval from the SBA. Remember, special approval from the SBA. So if Nathan's and Ruth Chris and all of these other companies ended up getting the funding, the SBA signed off on it. Okay. The SBA signed off on the program because if you read, I mean, on the loan, on the promissory notes, because if you read the fine print for individual businesses that have 500 or more employees, you had to get approved. In addition to that, they didn't specify if the business, and this is why it's so much chaos happening with the loan application process. See, they wanted our small businesses to fail. They wanted the funding to fall short because they didn't think, okay, well, you know what? Let's set more guidelines. Small businesses with income or net profit or gross revenue or employee wage amount of this amount apply apply on this date. These businesses with these requirements apply on this date. And then guess what? Don't allow the banks to approve and shuffle applications and do anything. It should have been a numerical um calculation i mean a numerical enumerated application form so for example when i sign is 1001 when a person signed behind me 1002 1003 1004 okay and so it will show if a uh, application was shuffled if application 1015 okay is before 1005 but because they didn't think about this, because they forgot that the banks are part of Wall Street and Wall Street are straight crooks, they forgot that honestly, they shut out the small businesses. So I'm not gonna blame the banks. I'm not gonna blame the, the loan officers. Yes, they played a key part in that. But if it was stiffened requirements, then you as a small business owner will probably be in better shape or in a better financial position, or possibly a possibly being able to get your loan approved. But right now, because once again, the same situation happened, the banks opened up their application process, started accepting applications, systems crashed, the bank submitted the application that was already pending, with no requirements. So, for example, the SBA should have said your business had to have a net income of $1,000 or more, or your business had to have a net income of $10,000 or more. So that would have prevented all of the businesses that know they weren't profitable. That would have prevented all of the businesses that know they don't have no employees and they overclaimed their expenses and did some shady stuff. That would have, it just would have strengthened up the policy and requirements, but it would have just made it much more fair. Like right now, I just don't think that things were really set up successfully for the small business um, owner. Okay. So let me go back to the Nathan's article.
So guys, so basically what I'm realizing, and I've been saying this far along this whole journey of the COVID situation, is that your destiny is in your hand. And remember, as an entrepreneur, we're dealing in a capitalist you know, country. And I don't believe that the government should be bailing big businesses out. I don't believe that a company on the stock market and their CEOs and C-suite executives are ranking in millions of dollars and bonuses and stock options and everything else. And then they get to also qualify for bailout. How do you get a bailout when you just paid your, your top executive a million dollars and you would have paid them more than a million dollars if they didn't put a cap on it years ago with regulation? So it says Nathan's Famous Hot Dogs, which has over 200 locations, has products marketed for sale in over 78,000 locations and is publicly traded. So first of all, that could have been one requirement as well. No publicly traded companies. How are you considered even a small business if you are a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ at that? Okay, so... Um, 78,000 location and is publicly traded on the NASDAQ. They applied for and received a $1.2 million loan through the Paycheck Protection Program, according to documents filed with the Securities Exchange Commission on Monday. So this is how people found out. They went to the 10K or the 8K document on the SEC and saw that um, Nathan said that they received the $1.2 million loan. But this is the thing. So I know many of you small businesses are wondering why are so many big businesses trampling over getting this funding? Guys, the cost of debt is low. Anytime you can get a loan, meaning somebody else's money, OPM, other people's money, anytime you can get OPM for 1%, like that is the best loan ever in the lifetime ever in history. And most businesses know that they can turn that 1.2 million into eight to 10 million, 20 million. And then they only pay 1% entrance. <laughs> that will be the cheapest infusion, financial infusion into their businesses than, their, than they ever experienced. The cheapest infusion. Because you will never get the cost of a dollar for 1% interest. The banks will never lend you any money for 1%. What is the average interest rate? Even for a house now, it's like 3.5%. Even my mortgage or my house, my loan is 3.5. I bought my house in 13, 2013, 3.5%. And so if I'm getting my mortgage for 3.5% and you're getting a $100,000 loan for 1%, who's winning? You are winning. And then the loan terms, it's like two years. And so any smart business person is like, oh my gosh, I can do so much with that money. I can flip it like four and five times. I can make that money back. I can give some bonuses. I can do this. I don't have to borrow from XYZ at 13%. The average business, the average CEO is looking at that loan opportunity as like the best fried chicken, like the Popeye's sandwich, Popeye's chicken sandwich, indeed. They want it. And that's exactly what happened. So as a small business owner, I want you guys to understand that funding, getting loans, and building credit, and building relationships with your bank is required. You cannot be afraid to lend, to receive money or to get a loan. You just have to know that it's certain disciplines that you're going to have to require, acquire. And then also you're going to have to put certain protocols, protocols in place to prevent you from overspending or not repaying the loan or kind of screwing up your credit. But in the African-American community, it is very uncommon for us to get loans or even be comfortable. But this is the mindset of the past. 
the mindset of the future is yes, if you don't need the depth, don't get it. But from a business, business, business standpoint, all right, you will never get the cost of using other people's money that low again. So this is looked at as an opportunity. While some people are looking at, looking at the situation as detriment and life-threatening, the bankers, Wall Street, the CEOs that's leveraging, sometimes me, I'm looking at this as opportunity. And you should as well. So guys, I'm going to take a quick little one-minute break, and then I'm going to come back and give you five tips that you should be thinking about right now and running your business, okay? And then we're gonna get ready to close out. So I'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. So I just wanted to give you guys five things that you all should be focusing on in your business uh, while we're going through this pandemic. But honestly, while we're going through it after the pandemic, and I hope you make this a discipline and a habit to keep it going. So the first thing that you want to do is start to cut costs. So I'm not talking about just slash any type of cost. No, really sit back and evaluate what are you utilizing? So for example, I had a client that said she was trying to cut back costs and I asked her, hey, would you trying to cut back your accounting? And so one of the things that you never cut back in a pandemic is your financial services. You never. The reason being is because right now everybody needs paperwork to get the loan. Everybody needs representation if you get audited. Everybody needs financial statements or their taxes done or them to create worksheets or put the paperwork together for the loan. Whatever the case may be, your accountant is supposed to walk you through. Even when it goes down to cutting your costs, there has to be a strategy behind it. If you know you've been BSing on utilizing a program or service and you've been paying 80 to 100 dollars a month cut that service start back up once you get serious okay so number one start cutting costs evaluating things but you never cut your financial services number one number two figure out ways legitimately to increase sales but i want you guys to do it creatively everybody now is starting to offer the little mask with the purchases that's over and done with okay everybody done done that now what else are you going to do to now increase sales because just having a mask with your packages and programs is not going to entice people to buy your services and products right now. What are you going to do to increase sales? Are you going to introduce a new product? Are you going to introduce a new service? Are you going to um, build out a new membership? What are you going to do? Are you going to um, incorporate some new things? Are you going to add on additional um, trades or services? What are you going to do? Okay, that's what you need to be asking yourself, like now. Number three, 
you want to find revenue streams to cover your expenses. So I had a conversation with one of my clients yesterday, a new client of mine. And so I'm a bit uh, hesitant sometimes when I talk about wealth strategies, because wealth strategies, you have to have a wealthy mindset to even understand and grasp what I'm saying. But what I found consistently between my very, very wealthy multi-millionaire clients is that they're not really paying for everything. They have some type of additional revenue stream or additional a uh, venture or something that covers X, Y, Z. So for example, the revenue that they bring in from their rental properties cover their personal mortgage, okay? Or if they have a hobby of horseback racing, so what they end up doing is breeding in addition to the horseback rating, um, horseback racing. Um, some of my clients even sell dogs. They, they, they have other revenue streams set up in place that are their actual hobbies. Like they enjoy doing it to compensate and cover their expenditures and their lifestyle. So basically they're living the life of the rich and famous for free. Okay. Number four, add more value, 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 value. So what I learned the other day, and I learned this years and years ago, but as an entrepreneur, you always get this slap in the face. You can't please everybody. I don't care what you try to do. If you're trying to save these people a hundred million dollars. If you're trying to deliver a baby in the most healthiest cleanliness situation, you can't please everybody, right? But what you could do is always add more value, okay? So what does more value look like? More value is, for example, let's use me. So one of my clients, I'm finishing up their taxes right now, right? And they're not my one-on-one -on -one client, right? But they used to be. And I already have my team create the PPP calculator for our clients. I already had my team create the PPP loan forgiveness thing for all this stuff. Like me and my team have already created all of this stuff. And so what I did was I said, okay, well, give me some time. I'm going to um, calculate the loan information for you, added value. Even my other clients, you know, whatever I can possibly do, I add more value. So always add more value. So that might mean a new additional worksheet or additional blueprint or an additional strategy session or just some tips or something that's unique to their industry or their businesses. Um, it might can be a referral, something, add more value. And last but not least, guys, partner, 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 partnership is key. Who's ever is in your Rolodex is what really predicts your revenue in the next two to three years. If you're not building relationships, if you're not building your book of business and, and doing joint ventures and partnering with like-minded entrepreneurs, then how are you expanding? How are you gaining exposure? So many businesses right now that are struggling, they're struggling because they didn't do one of the five things that I mentioned to you today. So for example, Ben's Chili Bowl, Instead of them being concerned about the PPP loan, there are different alternatives. Many people don't have an actual accountant that will sit there and calculate the, the, the different options. So instead of just going for the PPP loan, he could have went with the employee retention credit cut back some employees and just kept on the amount of employees that's required, get the credit, build the delivery business, build the carry out business, okay, in the pickup curbside pickup business, and then focus from there. But because we want to keep everything the same, the same amount of employees, the same amount of locations, the same amount of everything, we are messing ourselves up. This is a time now, guys, that we have to become creative, unique, and bring it all to the table. It's not personal. Take your feelings out of it. It is business. If the cost doesn't make sense, let it go. If you can't increase sales, you need to consult with a coach 
or salesperson. If you cannot find other revenue streams to cover your costs, then you may need to cut some more of your expenses because you're not going to bring in enough money to cover it. If you can't add in more value, you need to figure out, are you even worth what your clients are paying you? And last but not least, and last but not least, who is in your Rolodex? Who can you pick up the phone and call? Who could you text and say, I need help, let's partner or, or let's work together or do something, right? 2020 is the year of the truth, the realities, and the fakes and the frauds will be exposed. So now it's time for you to step up and allow yourself to shine and get the clients that you've been trying to acquire from all of the frauds, y'all. So look. That's my time, y'all. The show is over, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. I'm your girl, Falasha Day, the Accountability Accountant, guys. Please don't forget to follow me on all social media. And then also, look out for, we're going to do a giveaway. Um, I've been really talking with my team about what the giveaway should be. My team is saying it should be money. My team is saying, I don't know if it should be money. So let me know what you guys think. Should we, I don't know. Let me know what you guys have ideas for our giveaway. Um, but yes, so guys, I will see you all next week. See you later. Bye, y'all.